the reason it's important that the diaphragm be very free running is that the clip that connects the diaphragm and the shutter speed dial together is not particularly strong. So you don't want the blades causing any resistance, otherwise stuff's not going to happen correctly. So the mechanism plate. Get the blade actuating ring on here. Make sure that none of the levers are tucked underneath it. Let's get that spring hooked up. That's the detent. The detent acts to ensure that the shutter is biased to uh, fully open or fully closed. It's less likely to just want to stop in the middle. Put three screws. One of them's longer than the others. And that goes through the bracket that holds the main spring in place. And it's this screw. There's not much in it. Perhaps a quarter of a millimetre. It's enough to make a difference. If you mix the screws up and put the long screw where a short screw should be, then it will stick out through the bottom of the mechanism plate and catch on a shutter blade. If you put a short screw where a long screw should be, when you go to do it up, you'll probably find that uh, it's only got half the threads engaged in the plate that it normally has. And so when you apply the normal torque, you strip the threads out. So that's another thing that's worth um, being very careful about. Now I'm just going to lubricate this blade actuating ring with a bit of graphite powder which I do just by dropping it in around the, uh, the holes you can see there. And then just move that backwards and forwards. To work it into areas that contact each other. I'll just go and blow that out. The blade actuating ring in the blade's open position. If I can get it there. That's better. I can put the shutter blades in place. The shutter blades are just lay one on top of each other. They're not interleaved. hard getting under these shutter blades to pick them up with the tweezers. Alright, so there's our shutter blade sitting in place. And I can put the shutter case on the top. It only goes in one position and it's there. Three screws hold the case together. Countersunk head screws. Third one, here he is. Get the screws started. Never do them up tight until you've checked that the shutter blades are still correctly in position. It's easy to um, get them trapped if one of them bounces off while you're busy dealing with things. That looks good. These shutter blades have got some, some slight marks on them, but there's nothing serious there. 
and there's no there's no problem with the surface smoothness of the blades they'll work fine all right so with that done we start putting this stuff onto the mechanism plate which means starting with little springs and springs are keen to get away I always want to be on the other side of the room somewhere where you're not going to see them again or not going to see them again for months I'm going to lift the tail of the spring over and hook it behind that post there just like that so that lever's sprung loaded that lever's sprung loaded the next spring is the B lever spring that goes on here there's a groove around that post it sits on there the B lever let's just hold this back and open the shutter blades That'll allow the B lever to drop down into the relaxed position, holding the blades open. And then I can fit the screw that holds that in place. And the screw also has another spring on it which acts on the MXV lever one that sets your flash sync speeds or self timer over here so that's all in place hold the b lever back i can pull that back into place where's a bit of uh, molybdenum paste there's a couple of spots on here i need to just deal to now the detent spring that tends to hold the shutter open or closed that needs some just on that spring and these two points here where the main drive cam picks up the blade actuating ring moves it one way and then moves it the other way all right that's looking quite good let's put in the pull the ratchet wheel for the uh, flash sink and this little lever here is sector gear that drives that that's seated in position and it's return spring has to be hooked over that post stretched out into the little hole on the arm of that sector gear here we go now the MXV lever and so forth can go on the back there's a little detent spring here I've put a bit of a wipe of molybdenum paste on that and on this little piece here which is where the ratchet teeth sit I'll just put it on there pop that in so that's behind that spring that's sitting that's sitting flush it is indeed the shim goes in place and then I want the aperture setting lever here so that means I've got to find the two tiny screws that hold that and that ain't one this is one Its mate is here.
check that lever moves freely it's nice and smooth so more for the mechanism plate some more of the flash sink stuff this little sprung loaded lever which helps drive that flash sink arrangement hooks over there make sure it's, it's spring at the tab of it there is sticking against the case and not on top of the case or poking up in the air the moving flash contact goes on top of that lever sits right there I'll just cock that now this is the latch that latches the main drive cam in the cocked position and this was the piece that was rusted in this shutter and I've chosen to take the one from the rusty shutter which ironically was not as rusty it's a plain screw at this end Where's my spring? What have I done with it? Back in a second. Right, you can stop looking. It was there all along. That is a shoulder screw goes through here. That spring has to be free to rotate around the shoulder, not get trapped underneath it. Like it's doing its best to do at the moment. That's better. And the spring needs to be lifted up behind the arm and drops into a tiny slot in the back of that arm, which locates it. So that lever is sprung loaded and a little wipe of molybdenum on there is a good idea that's where it latches to the main drive cam the shutter release lever is here fits in here has to hook under the B lever and its spring tucks down inside the case. So that lifts this lever which then releases the main drive cam. The main drive cam's here. I usually do it, give it a wipe through the sender and then the areas where it contact pick these two points here and here it was where it picks up the blade at, actuating ring and this edge here is where it runs over the retard gear train and if that's not lubricated it means that the action when you cock the shutter in particular is stiffer than it should be and if it's stiffer than it should be then it means that the action of the the shutter cocking rack is being stressed up more than it should be and if that's the case it's more likely to fail now let's put the main drive spring in place we'll cock the shutter that fires no problem that's all good right put the retard gear train in delay action or self timer in place now these have been cleaned and I've lubricated these with a bit of graphite powder they should be ready to race this is the pivot point at this end for the retard gear train make sure that lever is pulled back behind the tab it connects to on the blade actuating ring there's an oversized hole that this screw passes through and that allows you to 
adjust the position of the retard gear train and you swing it inwards for greater engagement with the cam or outwards for lesser engagement with the cam and the amount of engagement with the cam determines your speed adjustment to a large extent here is the self timer or delay action get that seated correctly get a single screw in place just run that down It's running nice and smoothly, and there's the shuffle, running at something like one second. So this little uh, pinion is driven by the internal cocking rack here. what would be the main lever on a Retina 2A type shutter. Oops, let's bring that back in a second. I didn't mean to throw it away. I just wipe that inside and out with a bit of... with wipe of molybdenum paste. Let's get that thing's not seating correctly, why not? That's better. This goes in and has to the spring has to go over that little post there. That little post is on the catch that holds the shutter from releasing unless the self timer is run down. The speed setting cam plate is here. So I just want to wipe once around the inside and once around those cam surfaces there. That'll do. You don't need to smother that with graphite grease or anything like that. Right, this would be the eight, one, eight sec, one eighth of a second speed. It's pretty close. Could potentially be a little bit quick. I'm going to put the retaining ring on the front test this on my shutter speed tester and see what it's like and make any adjustments I need to and to slow the shutter speeds to slow the shutter up I would loosen the screw holding the end of the retard gear train and swinging it inwards for greater engagement with the cam and if I want to speed it up I'd swing it outwards back shortly well that is running about half a stop fast so I will need to swing the retard gear train in for greater engagement. So I'll slacken that screw, move my retard gear train in, oh that's probably too much. We'll find out. I suspect it'll be running slow at that position. The adjustments needed are fairly subtle. It's easy to overdo it and spend the rest of your afternoon toing and froing. I'll see what that. Oh yeah, I'm I'm good to go here. I can tell because there's another way of adjusting speeds on the shutters. This is the best way, moving the speed train. There's also another way. The pin here on this arm, which you can bend it, you can bend it so that it effectively swings the arm further out than normal or swing it the other way so that the arm is swung less far than normal and you can adjust the speeds that way. Well I can see someone's bent this previously and that would make the thing run slow. Well at the moment I'm fairly confident that my adjustment is making this slightly slow. So I can bend that back in more upright, more straight up and down and it'll probably speed that up and it'll probably be correct. 
Right, well, the curved pusher and the curved rack, I'm just wiping them with molybdenum paste so that they'll run smoothly and get them sitting in place in the housing here. This is the outer case. Cock the shutter and get the case in position. Oh, I've just noticed something interesting. Why is that not sitting correctly? It's better. Make sure that the flash contact tucks in nicely here and the screws line up. These two screws are different sizes, if you mix them up it won't go well. I tried to mix them up there, it wasn't having it. And the flash contact is a little plastic clamp here that holds that in firmly together. So that's all done. Now what was the secret of the things I, I noticed? Well on this lever, this is our aperture pointer, it has a crosshead screw. Kodak never used crosshead screws, that's a foreigner. I will steal the screw from the other shutter and we'll use that first I'll have to find a screwdriver to get that crosshead screw out I suppose <laughs> 